Hey, welcome back to Well.com. Hi, I'm Mr. Tig, and we're doing a series for the newbies. And again, the newbie isn't someone that's necessarily just learning to weld. They may already know how to weld, but want to know about TIG specifically. So we're going to show some machines that are hitting the market, and we're testing them, we're playing with them. Uh, they're not necessarily heavy-duty machines. In fact, most of them are not heavy-duty machines. So we've done uh, testing on various machines like Harbor Freight. Uh, and so what's out there? What's something that you would enjoy at a low cost? Uh, so we did a series on a 140 amp DC only machine, and that machine was about $300. And you get what you pay for. It's a good little starter machine. Now, if you step it up and the price tag goes up to about, and let's just say $700, what step up is there? Yeah, so we brought in a machine that is about $700. Uh, so we want to introduce the features of this type of machine and again it's an economy type machine it's not your heavy duty going to weld production over and over and over again so if you want something for home or just a uh, you know light duty then you can get one of these machines for seven hundred dollars and the features include first of all it's an inverter machine it's dc only now dc means we're only going to do steel stainless steel zinc and oil. we're not going to do aluminum uh, so just know that this is DC only. The machine runs off of 110 or 220. That's kind of a neat feature with a lot of the newer machines. Uh, now this also has pulsing in it. It has a, a high frequency start, which is a really nice feature to have. Yeah, so we're going to tell you what you get when you open up the package. So that's exactly what we did. We ordered a Power Eye TIG. 200 and what you see here is everything in the package. So let me go through this yeah, so you fully understand what you get Okay, this machine is already pre-wired for 220 if you want to do 115 you can plug it in here Plug this into the wall and the machine will respond. It'll set itself at 115 now you're going to get 200 amps out of this machine when you're on 220 when you're uh, on household current, you're going to get, oh, you're roughly somewhere around 120 amps, plus or minus. So just know that that's plenty of amps to do a lot of your home projects. So here's a feature. If you want to stick weld with it, you can stick weld with almost any TIG machine because it's constant current. Now, one of the differences when you start upgrading in features and, and what this $700 includes is you get a nice upgraded regulator. You can see it's a nice brass regulator. It's not plastic and you get the hose that connects it. And, and I come over here and this is very typical on an awful lot of the imported machines. It's a very large torch. Is it functional? Absolutely. It works very, very good. It's just huge. It's just cumbersome to use. And we're going to get into some special techniques, uh, how to change that out. But for right now, this is the torch that you get with the machine. You don't get a foot control at this point. What you do get is you get this thumb switch. And this machine has an upslope, downslope. So this works pretty good. It's just too rigid. Okay, and you get a ground clamp and cable. And you also get a few accessories. And we're going to upgrade that in just a few minutes because you've heard us talk about gas lenses and things like that. When you get into this, this size of machine and this cost of machine, you expect it to perform a little bit better, and it does. Uh, so again, we get back to instructions. Um, so let me get my gear on, and I want to go through some of the functions here and show you what you can do or not do with this machine. Okay, now we're going to go through the functions of this machine because it has an awful lot of functions to it. And, and you can tell from the previous machine that, that we were showing you, uh, it only had two or three little functions. This one's got pulsing. This has got 2T, 4T. So let's just get started and go through it. First of all, turn the machine on at the back. Turn it on, and you're going to see that the amperage is going to show up. And what this is is the amperage that you're demanding. Well, I can't weld much on 4, 6, or 11 amps, so I'm going to be doing 16 gauge material. Rule of thumb, 1 amp per 1,000. So I'm going to set the machine at 60 amps. Uh, so if I start right here, you're going to see that there's a function it's called it's pulsing. And it's got an on and off. And for today's session, we're not going to use the pulser, so turn it off. 
The next function is pretty critical because it says 4t, and at the bottom of it, it shows 2t. Now what that means is 4t is a trigger switch. Now right now, we don't have the foot control on here, but what I'm going to do is when I depress this, I got a live arc, and I can let off, and I still have a live arc. I can continue to weld until I get ready to finish, and then I depress it a second time. So that's a 4T function. If I put it on 2T, when I push it, I got live arc. When I let off, it kills the arc. So that really is the definition of the two, and we're gonna demonstrate both. Okay, so for this machine right now, I'm gonna set it on 4T, because I'm gonna demonstrate with exactly what comes with the machine. Now, there's two functions here, TIG or stick. We're, we're gonna do TIG. So press the TIG function, move over one more, and you'll see a toggle here that says HF, that's high frequency, or lift start. Now, the high frequency, this arc will start automatically. The high frequency would jump and, and initiate the arc. That's a sweet way to do it, and that works pretty well. Now, when you put it on lift arc, you may be in an area where you're concerned about interference, and that's HF inter interference. It's not a big problem with this type of machine, but it's still there. And what you do is you actually touch the part and lift up and the arc will initiate. So that takes care of, of the top row. Now let's go down to the next row. This is amperage, and like I say, I set this at 60 amps. Now this next button, this green button says arc force. We're not talking about stick welding, so that function means nothing to us right now. And if you look at these yellow buttons, they have something to do with pulsing and frequency. Again, we're not going to demonstrate pulsing in this feature. So we've gone all the way through this machine. Now we're down to the real nuts and bolts of the machine. And I want you to take a look at this preflow because it's really critical. I don't prefer putting in a preflow. And the reason for that is because sometimes you don't know exactly where it's sitting. You demand the arc and it doesn't come on. You hear argon, but the arc comes on as soon as you flip your hood up. So I, I put it on zero. What I prefer is to put about a five second post flow. And that's this button right here, the second one over. So put five seconds. And the next one is your upslope. So when we're using a 4T and I push this button, I can demand the amperage to increase at a certain rate. Now you have to decide what that is. So I'm going to have it go from 5 amps up to 60 amps in about 5 seconds. When I finish my weld, I'm going to tap this again and I've got a downslope button. So let's go ahead and I'm going to put my gear on. We're going to do a weld using 4T. Okay, now this is a, it's a well-controlled puddle, and I'm going to terminate the weld here shortly by hitting my 4T button again, and you'll see how it terminates very nicely, and it's down sloping, and it takes several seconds, and we're done. And if you look at this, it's got a nice puddle to it, just well-controlled. Uh, I'm going, to, uh, I'm going to change this over and put the foot control on, but before I do, I'm not going to use this torch. This is not my favorite torch, just because of the size. It'll get the job done. It'll do everything you need to do. But if you want to get serious, stay tuned, and I'm going to show you how to get serious about TIG welding, especially if you need to articulate and get into some really tight spots. Okay, well, so far this machine worked pretty good on the, uh, on the old torch that came with it. It's a big 26-style torch. Uh, now I want to show you how you really step up your game, especially get into the tight spots. I like to put on the, uh, it, I call it a flex head with a super flex cable on it. And if you notice, it doesn't have any apparatus on it, uh, so I'm not touching any buttons. But this is also a flex head, so if I need to get into the tight spots, I can. And of course, I am using a gas lens. It allows me to pull the tungsten out a little bit further. 
Now, another way of getting precision control of your puddle is to just attach a foot control. Now, the foot control doesn't come with a lot of machines, so just know that you've got to pick out your machine and your particular foot control. It has a certain resistance to it. So, you know, give us a call if you ever have any questions on this. Now, the foot control is 2T, and when I say that, it has its own upslope, and it's you. It's you, the person. So you can initiate the arc, high frequency, and you can hear the gas solenoid kick on, argon comes on, and when you increase, you're increasing amperage. So you can increase up to 200 amps with this machine, or you can back off, and when you start finishing your weld, you can taper off, let your puddle re-solidify, and you can hold it there at about 6 amps. So you're going to find that this machine is going to be very popular with the gunsmith type people. So if you need to just put a little spot or do a little repair, uh, this works quite well. Again, it's not super heavy duty. It's, uh, it, it's something that does work well though. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do a little beat on play just to show you how this foot control works. Okay. Okay, so I uh, hit the foot control, the arc initiates, gas solenoid comes on, and it's a, uh, this is a full function machine. Now, you'll find in welding steels, a lot of false phosphorus and sulfur in the material, so it has a tendency to be unstable. When you add filler material, the deoxidizers stabilize your puddle. So just keep dabbing, 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 dabbing. Now what I'm going to do right now is come to a weld termination and show you how low the amperage will go on this machine. And so I'm going to take it all the way down to probably around seven or eight amps. And the puddle's re-solidified. I'm just showing you how low it'll go right now. And I'm going to extinguish the arc and that weld is finished. Okay, now uh, I'm just going to run over here and do a, a corner joint real quick. Corner joint's a little more difficult, but it's, you know, basically putting two pieces together in a corner. And I've got very good control of the puddle because I am using a foot control. And so I go ahead and dab, dab, dab. And, and these parts were not cleaned up other than acetone wiped. And I just, I did that for a couple of reasons. I want to show you the material in the as-is condition. Well, you know, we're going to, uh, we're going to continue this series, the newbie series. Uh, again, this machine is a DC only machine and you can see that there's several options of, of packaging this machine. Uh, so I want you to take a look at the uh, show notes so you can see where and how to get these machines and the accessories. Uh, like I say, this happens to be one of my favorites, so you'll see this show up in an awful lot of shows. Uh, we're going to be doing a series with an ACDC machine probably next, so that's going to give you a chance to see the aluminum capability of a low-cost machine. I want to thank you for watching TIG Time. I'm Mr. TIG.